Hello, second grade. Are you ready to do some painting? Your learning goal for this lesson says I can use cool colors to create a mood in my painting. Let's talk about what the cool colors are. Look at these two paintings. Do these paintings have a warm feeling or a cool feeling? One reason they're cool looking is because of the snow, but even just the color blue. All the light blue, medium blue, and dark blue make the picture look chilly. This is a monochromatic painting. It only has one color. That's what monochromatic means. But the tints are the lighter values of that color, and the shades are the darker values of that color. This is called The Starry Night by Vincent van Gogh. Would you say there's mostly warm colors? or mostly cool colors. Well, the warm colors are the yellows, oranges, and reds. And I only see a few yellow spaces for the stars. And the cool colors are the blues, greens, and purples. I see a lot of blue and a little green in this painting. In this project, we're going to be creating a cool painting using blue, green, and purple. And then next week, I'll be explaining silhouettes to you, and we'll be making a black tree and possibly black animal on top of this dry painting. Here's a plan for what I'm going to be doing. I'm going to trace three different size circles, one inside the other, and I'm going to leave the center circle white to be the moon. And then each ring around the moon will get a little tiny bit darker blue. All the sky beyond the rings will be blue mixed with purple, and the grass can be green. Those are all the cool colors. We'll let our painting dry and then come back next week and paint a black silhouetted tree on top of our dry painting. Let's get started. Follow along on the guided drawing lesson and use watercolor paints or whatever type of paint you have at home. For my demonstration, I will do two paintings. The first one, I'm going to use a watercolor set. And for the second one, I'm going to use tempera paint or poster paint. You may have that at home, and that's really cool because you can mix with white paint. So for this first one, I'm finding three circles around the house, lids or containers or cups or glasses or bowls that I can trace one on top of the other and make it look like a moon for the smallest one and a ring around the moon for the next circle and an even bigger glow around the moon for the third one. So three concentric circles. Concentric means there's one inside the other. Trace them with a pencil and notice I'm holding my paper vertical because we're going to be doing a tall tree. We want a tall paper. Many of you have watercolor sets at home, so you can do this project using watercolors, but notice there is no white. So if you want to mix with white paint, you might want to use poster paints or tempera paints, or pour a little white paint onto the watercolor set. I'm going to just add water to make my blue a light, light blue. So I start by putting a puddle of water on the lid, and I add a little blue to it, and I spread it around and make sure that my blue is a very light value. Value is the word in art that means the lightness or darkness of a color. And we want a light value for the first ring around the moon. To make a darker value, you need to add a little more paint and a little less water. So this time I'm going to grab some blue paint and add water to it, but not quite as much as I had the first time. So it's slightly darker blue. Oops, that's called bleeding. When one color leaks into an area where you did not want it to go, it's bleeding. And it's easy enough to clean that up with watercolor paints. I'm just going to finish spreading my blue, and then I'll clean all the paint off my brush and use it like a mop to soak up the area that bled. So now I'm cleaning my brush and I'm wiping all the extra water off of it, and I'm coming back to soak up the paint that got past the line. I don't want that to get too dark. I want to keep it nice and light, so I'm going to clean the brush and just keep removing any extra dark blue that leaked over the line. 
Go slowly and carefully because you want your edges to be nice and clean. All right, now we're ready to add some purple to our blue, and blue and purple is going to be the rest of the sky. So we want to keep it rather light because a silhouette is going to look best if we have a light sky with a dark tree, not a dark tree on top of a dark sky. It's too hard to see the contrast that way. So I'm just adding blue and purple and I'm going to continue filling in. I think I forgot to draw in my ground and so I'm just going to make a pencil line there so I know where to stop filling in my bluish purple sky. I'm going to speed up my painting now, but please take your time and do a very, very neat job. You should have some paper underneath your artwork because as you can see, I'm getting all sorts of paint on the countertop, which is fine for the art room, but at your homes, you do not want to make a painting mess on your work workspace or your kitchen table. I'm just going to spend a moment to smooth out my paint lines so it doesn't look messy. Now you have some options on your grass. You can either do the grass green to stay with the cool color theme, or you could do the grass black to stay with the silhouette theme. The tree is definitely going to be black, along with any animal that you want to include or a tire swing. Those will all be black. So I will let you decide whether you want green grass or black grass. And I'm going to do two paintings, and one I'll do green and the other I'll do black, so you can see what looks best for you. When you're done painting the sky, and the grass, we need to let this set aside for one week to dry so we can come back to our next week and do the black painting of the tree. So I'll put this somewhere to dry and I'm just going to show you what a mess that made on my counter. So make sure you are using a placemat or newspaper or something under your painting. Right now I just want to show how we would do the same project using tempera paint because I may be using this in the classroom. We're going to leave the moon white, like we did with the watercolor paint. You don't need to paint it white just because you have white paint. Often that white gets a little bit dirtied and it doesn't actually look very good. So what I'm going to do here is mix white with turquoise. And I'm going to make the lightest light blue that I can. And I'm going to paint that first ring around the moon with the light blue, leaving the paper of the moon white paper. Remember the vocabulary word value? Well, that's the lightness or darkness of a color. So I want you to control the value of the blue as you get farther away from the moon. So this time I'm going to have you use turquoise paint and not add any white to it. So it's just going to be a regular turquoise color without white added and it'll be a darker turquoise. Paint neatly, paint slowly, and make sure your edges are smooth and clean and neat and keep inside the lines. Here we're going to be putting some darker blue for the night sky. Spread this all around and you can add a little purple to it too for a little variation. I'm not doing that here with mine. I'm just going to stick with blues, but if you want blue violet, go for it. The bottom of the page where the grass would be, this time I'm going to do it a little different. Instead of using green paint, I'm going to use black paint when I do my black tree. Come back next week and we will work on a black silhouette of a tree. Welcome back to part two. I hope you saved your painting from last week because today we're going to be painting a black tree with no leaves but lots of crazy twisted branches on top of your dried painting from last week. Your learning goal for this week says I can use contrast to create a silhouette. Contrast is when you have dark colors next to light colors and there's a difference between the two and it's easy to see. Here are some silhouettes that I found on the internet. Some are, are paintings and some are actual photographs. The sky is usually bright and the object is always black. This is a perfect example of contrast. The sky and the trees are very different. Before we paint with black on top of your beautiful painting from last week, I want you to practice one on a piece of blank paper. Using black paint, we're going to paint a tree with lots of branches getting thinner and thinner. You should even practice creating an animal sitting in the tree or on the ground. And if you would like a swing, like a tire swing hanging from the tree, that's another great thing to practice. 
always practice first. All right, are you ready to get started? Let's go. So here I am with my practice paper. I'm holding it the tall vertical direction and using watercolor paint, but only black. I think I'll start by painting in my grass black, which you may choose to do on your silhouette, or you could choose to leave it green if that's what you chose last week. But for my practice one, I'm gonna do the grass in black. So the tree makes more sense growing out of the grass. You'll notice the more water I have on my brush, the lighter the black looks and the less water I have on my brush, the darker the black looks. I'm starting with the tree trunk, drawing two lines and filling between them with black paint. And then at some point, I have to split my tree into two or three smaller branches. I'll split mine in half. One branch goes to the left, one branch goes to the right, and then add smaller branches coming off of those. Every branch gets a thinner branch growing from it. So you might have to press a little bit lighter with your paintbrush to make the lines get thinner and thinner. The harder you press, the thicker the lines. The lighter you press, the finer the lines. Fill all the branches up with more branches until you reach towards the top of the page. Remember, you're gonna be painting on top of your moon so these branches could go right in front of the moon. Once you're happy with the looks of your tree and all the branches, we're now going to think of an animal that you can practice. Remember, this is practice, so if it doesn't turn out very well, you don't have to put it on your final picture. I think I'll do a body and a head of a cat. The triangles are the ears, and then I'll make a tail growing up from behind. And that's about all I really need. The way he's sitting, I don't see the legs and I don't see the arms. They're all tucked inside. A black cat is sort of a neat idea for a Halloween picture with a spooky tree. Here are some birds flying in the sky, but you could also make them bats. And with, once I'm happy with my practice picture, I can do it on the actual dry blue painting. For my first example, I'll go back to the one where I had the green grass. And I'm going to now just paint the black tree growing from the green grass. I'm using black watercolor paint on top of my dried watercolor painting from last week. Remember, you start with the trunk and then split it into thinner branches. Each one of those branches is going to get thinner still but don't end it right there. Keep going higher and higher and higher until the branches are overlapping the moonlight. To get your branches thinner, remember to put less pressure on the paintbrush. Now the reason we practice one of these beforehand was because we do not want to make a mistake now. If we make a mistake now, there's really no way to fix it with black paint on top of our painting. So we practice first to make sure we know how to handle the paintbrush. We also might know what animal we plan on doing. I think for fun, I will try a different animal on this painting so that you can choose which ones you want to do on your page. Here's a new idea. Do you know what I'm adding? A tire swing. Leave the hole in the middle of the tire empty so we can see the sky through there. This is going to be a wolf howling at the moon. So I have his face pointing up, his tail is up, and I added legs and arms to a body. I think I'll put an owl sitting up in the tree on a branch with pointy ears. There's the branch it's sitting on. Very nice. Here's some little birds flying in the sky like we practiced earlier. You can do those if you like. Now another option would be to use black paint to silhouette the grass as well as the tree. So you could take your black paint today and put it on top of the grass if you don't choose to go with green grass.
I'll go through the painting of the tree one more time. Two lines make the trunk, fill it in, split the tree into thinner branches, and add branches growing off of each one of those branches. And then continue the process. Branches are attached to every single branch you've done, but they get thinner and thinner each time. Try to paint with just the tip of your paintbrush to make the branches very fine at the top. Notice my branches are overlapping my moon. That's a very neat effect. Make sure your tree looks balanced on both sides and full enough. And then decide if you want to add an animal or a swing or a person. This is going to be a deer with a little tail. And there's his back and his other front leg and his other back leg. Be sure to share your masterpiece with me. Take a photo of it and share it with Miss Ross.